Disabled athletes at the Olympic Training Center in Morocco's capital Rabat push their physical limits. The country is taking another look at how its disabled people are integrated into Moroccan society. The young king has introduced a wave of reforms which have shaken up issues of disability in a social framework virtually everywhere in the country. There are one and a half million disabled people in Morocco. The European Union is supporting the reforms through the organization Handicap International and local partners. Even so, it's sometimes difficult to break through prejudice, something these athletes know only too well. I'll give you an example. Too often the so-called normal people look negatively on us, disabled people, sometimes very negative. Next to Rabat, Saleh, a city where there's a feel of commitment to the promotion of disabled people's rights. But in everyday life, there's still a lot that needs changing. In the 70s and 80s, the city experienced an influx of inhabitants from rural areas escaping problems of drought. Saleh remains a symbol of the anarchic urbanism of the time. Today, almost a million people live there, and 40,000 of them are disabled. Now, they are daring to demand that their rights be respected. Abdurrahman Moudni hasn't been able to go into the historic center of Saleh for eight years, since town planners redeveloped the zone without taking into account wheelchair access. You can see the market opposite, for example, a central market where there's lots of economic activity, but with no means for a wheelchair to get there. No public place is accessible. To make their voices heard, several organizations have grouped themselves together under an umbrella called the Collective to Promote Disabled People's Rights. Hisham Rashidi is the coordinator. <laughs> Moroccan legislation which is underway at the moment is largely based on a charitable approach, while the majority of disabled people are living with an unavoidable violation of their fundamental human rights, economic, social, cultural and political. But he also criticized the modernization program imposed by the World Bank and the International Monetary Fund in 1984, which pushed social issues to the sidelines. So it was the associations which appeared to address social and education issues at the time in the absence of any state participation. Today, the associations have begun initiatives pushing the government to make new concrete changes in the law on education. We want the national law to be able to enshrine absolutely the right of disabled children to have an education. Access to education and training is a problem. 72% of disabled people haven't had any, and that means it's difficult to find work. Three quarters of disabled working age people don't have a job of any kind. At the El Yad Fiyad Association for Deaf Children, Jamal Boujid dreams of becoming an IT engineer. With the internet chat, I've come on really well, discovering lots of other words in sign language. I've really improved my vocabulary with new signs which aren't really used here in Morocco. And I've made lots of mates here in Morocco and all around the world. Morocco is teeming with associations, 56,000 at last count, including 600 which work with the disabled. Today there's a party for the children of the area, with makeup and fancy dress costumes, and the disabled youngsters are at the centre of attention. The carnival is a great idea. Before the association began working here, no one was interested in disabled children. And now there's this huge event just for them.
In the province of Wazazat, a project called Horizon concentrates on the work perspective. The European Union has proved to be the most innovative and consistent international cooperation partner when it comes to questions about disability in Morocco. On the other hand, the aid earmarked for those at the sharp end remains small, less than 1% of the development aid budget. The Moroccan government's national disability inquiry confirms the poverty in which the majority of disabled people live. Only 11% have health insurance cover. The Horizon Project workshops provide training and employment. According to the director, they provide an essential way forward. There are many people here who, after some medical and therapeutic treatment, have a salary. A small one, it's true, but a fixed salary nonetheless. They have families, their own house, and that gives them more confidence in their true abilities. The way people view me has changed a lot. The Berber proverb says work gives dignity, whether it's a small job or a big project. It gives me pride and dignity for myself and in the way others look at me. According to staff at the Horizon Center, the introduction of social reforms in Morocco has brought about beneficial change for disabled people there. People's general view is changing compared with before. They have the right to express themselves, to work, to do a whole range of things. So they've integrated with so-called normal people. Sometimes it's simply the construction of a ramp, a feeling of reform and openness, an attempt to change the law or an accepting look which can give disabled people an easier life.